What a wild couple of months it's been for the Chicago Bears. To end the season, they kind of fluked into the number one overall pick. Yeah, they were not great this year, I know, but they were slotted in at number two. They were going to have the number two pick, whatever. It's still a very valuable pick, but it's not quite number one. And then the Texans converted that two-point conversion. The Bears get number one, and then suddenly the Bears are on the clock most valuable pick in the draft. Teams are going to want to move up for quarterbacks. We know the Bears are going to trade this pick. The one question is, how far down are the Bears going to go? Is it down one spot, two, three? Well, they moved all the way down to number nine when the Panthers moved up. And boy, did the Bears get rewarded handsomely for doing so. With the addition of the top player on your screen right now, DJ Moore. They also got a couple of very valuable picks in the future as well. A first rounder, another second rounder. Uh, and then in free agency, Tremaine Edmonds was brought in. Massive contract for a pretty good player. They're paying him a ton, but he could be invaluable to their defense. Bears GM Ryan Poles is not messing around, but unfortunately for him, he's fired now. I'm taking over as the new Bears GM. We're going to handle the offseason, decide what to do inside the top 10, and then maybe with our first round pick in 2024 now... And let's go ahead and get this thing started. We'll go over the roster real quick, and I'll tell you the usual things I have to when it comes to uh, these off-season rebuilds. So as I've mentioned on a number of different occasions, with these off-season rebuilds, it's pretty much impossible to get the best of both worlds. It's either you have the team that you want, the actual team, or you can't start at the point where you actually want to. So we are at the start of the 2022 season, unfortunately, with the 2023 roster minus the rest of the free agent moves they're going to do, if any, and of course, the NFL draft. But this is what the team currently looks like. Cody Whitehair, I think, is going to play center for us. Tevin Jenkins, I'm going to try at left guard. Nate Davis, who they, of course they signed, is going to start at right guard. And then we have Braxton Jones at left tackle. That's fine. So we're looking for another tackle, probably either in the draft or... At some point, that's a position we want to go ahead and address. The Bears sign Robert Tunyon. They have Cole Komet, obviously. It's a good one-two punch at tight end, especially if you want to run a lot of 12 personnel. Those are two pretty good options. Tunyon, I would say, is the better receiver of the bunch. Komet's still waiting to develop a little bit. But still, you know, big dude, young player, could definitely develop. 6'6", 260 is a massive human. They could maybe even try him at right tackle. Uh, although, no. Justin Fields is our quarterback, of course. The Bears lost David Montgomery to the Lions. They were never going to bring him back anyway. I wouldn't really call that a loss so much as it was that you are saving money. Khalil Herbert is a great option. I don't know that he's necessarily going to be RB1. That's why they brought in Deontay Foreman. And I know it's like, well, what do you mean? Of course he's RB1. He's going to be running back by committee, if I had to guess. And uh, it's a good committee that they have. Travis Homer in here as well. Don't expect him to factor too much into this rebuild, but honestly, neither of these backs will. Khalil Herbert should have star dev in Madden 24, but he doesn't now. It's unfortunate, but he's probably not going to be a good option for us in this rebuild. And then at receiver, this is starting to become a pretty good group of guys. I, you guys know I love Darnell Mooney. DJ Moore, I think, is still fantastic. A lot of people underrate DJ Moore. He's a really, really good player, in my opinion. And, uh... Certainly one of the best 15 or 20 receivers in the league. And I can say that very comfortably, if not higher than top 15. It's just there are so many good receivers in the league. It's tough to actually rank that position group more than any other, I would say. Chase Claypool's here. Equinemia St. Brown. But it's not a bad group of receivers. Still need to do some work there. But it's a good start, at least with DJ Moore and Darnell Mooney. Then on the defense side of the ball... Corner is a position of need for this team, but the defensive line, really the front seven, is really where this team is the weakest. Yeah, I like Tremaine Edmonds. They brought in TJ Edwards, who's going to start for me. We'll kick him out to linebacker. Jack Sanborn's here, too, who I like. Like, it's not a terrible linebacker group. We just got to move things around. But the defensive line, I think Jalen Holmes, is that what we're dealing with here? It's not good. It's not great, I, I think we can say. And then, of course, like Justin Jackson or Justin Jones, excuse me, um, Demarcus Walker was signed, Travis Gibson. We got some work to do. Like, Dominique Robinson was not too low of a draft pick last year. I want to say he was a third-round pick by the Bears, so he could potentially develop. You know, those guys don't always work out. He was a fifth-round pick, really. Lower than I thought. Um, but, you know... Could have something with him. I quite liked him, actually, as a prospect for, you know, a day two or even day three guy as he eventually ended up going. Uh, Terrell Lewis, but 
The best part of this defense is the secondary. Eddie Jackson, Jaquan Brisker, Jalen Johnson. Love Jalen Johnson. Jaquan Brisker, I think, could be a good player as well. Uh, Kyler Gordon, I think, has a ton of potential, depending on what you want to do with him. He's a press man corner, in my opinion. So um, we got that on lock. Just got to develop him, but the lack of star dev is not going to make it easy. But all right, you guys know the team. Now I just have to make sure the Bears have their correct picks, and we'll be moving on into the NFL draft. But yeah, the intermediary of these rebuilds between free agency and the draft is always really difficult because if we had the actual team like following the draft, we'd be fine to just start at 2022 and pretend it's 2023. But unfortunately, it just doesn't quite work that way. And it's it's just too impossible to go into an offline mode. Also, it takes so long to sim and set up a save point every time. And then in the instance that I forget to save, we lose everything. Uh, for that video. So there, there's just too many variables that make that impossible. I know that's been suggested, but it'd be a lot of work and then it could potentially fail and I would lose an entire video, which I do not want to do. Already make too many mistakes as it is. So here we are in the draft. As I've said before in these rebuilds, as, oh man, the quarterbacks are still on the board at number 10. TJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis. Now they're supposed to go higher, even in the draft class, but they are not for whatever reason. Um, but as I said before, to me, it's not really super important if, you know, the Bears pick at number nine and we're at number 10 when we do this video. It's about, you know, being in the same range and taking a player that they probably would look toward taking. So that's pretty much how we're doing this. As I mentioned, we can't set the entire draft order when we actually load in with all the free agent moves. So it's, it's kind of pick one or the other. And it's funny, in my last video with the Giants where I said, you know what, we're just going to do a random auto-generated draft class. I, I got to see, you know, like, oh, this is not it, dude. This is totally not it. You got to use a real draft class. Anyway, so here we are. And uh, the quarterbacks are not going for whatever reason. And we are presented with an interesting set of choices here. I think I would lean towards taking an offensive lineman. Broderick Jones and Paris Johnson are available. I think we're going to go Paris Johnson out of Ohio State. Plug him in at right tackle. Boom, offensive line fixed. Don't have to worry about it. And we'll look to address the defense with our next couple of picks. But Paris Johnson for me is going to be the one. Uh, I think Peter Skaronsky right now seems the most likely, but if he maybe profiles better as a guard due to his short little T-Rex arms, well, Paris Johnson, Broderick Jones... Definitely could be in play at number nine if the Bears don't decide to trade back again. Now, I'm very interested to see who's going to be available here in the second round. I think tight end's probably a position we don't really have to worry about right now with the addition of Robert Tunyon. With the launch of MLB The Show 23, it comes out officially tonight at midnight. I'm not going to be streaming it tonight, but I probably will be tomorrow. So check it out on twitch.tv slash bangle. I stream if you guys didn't know. Uh, and I can't commit to a full franchise series on my Bengal Plays channel. All these links are in the description, by the way. Uh, just because the game really wasn't that fun for me last year, and it was a little bit disappointing that I didn't provide you as many episodes as you guys wanted. But yeah, I'm going to be streaming it at least, trying it out. So check that out tomorrow, which is going to be Friday afternoon for you guys. And yeah, appreciate you. Link is down in the description. Thanks for the support. There are some very interesting prospects available. Now... I think JSN is going to be off the board by this point. I think Josh Downs could be available. I think Quentin Johnston is going to be off the board. And he's one of the most, I would say, uh, divisive prospects in this year's draft. Polarizing, if you will. Because, and from what I've heard also, uh, that some teams really, really like him. And I don't have any direct contact with those teams. I'm trying to make that abundantly clear if anyone thought I did. But I have guys that do. And apparently, Quentin Johnson is loved by some, not so much with others. So his draft position could be all over the place. I would be surprised if he made it to this point. I could see Anton Harrison getting here, but I do see Jameer Gibbs. And that is super intriguing. RB2 in the class, available round two, pick 10. I think that's reasonable. The Bears do have a need at running back. You know, Khalil Herbert's great. Jameer Gibbs as a, not only a third down back right out the gate, and especially with being about 200 pounds, that makes a ton of sense. But the juice that he provides just as a runner is exceptional. As a receiver, I love it. I'm going to take Jameer Gibbs here, and I'm not going to think twice about it. I know I said, well, we'll probably look to address defense with these selections, 
Sometimes a player is available on the board, staring at you in the face. We're pulling the trigger, and I think this is tremendous value. And he's eventually RB1 on this team for me, which... I am stoked about. Now, I will say that that first round, or excuse me, that second round pick was a little bit higher than the Bears should have been picking, but I think it's in the realm of possibility that Jameer Gibbs could potentially slip to where the Bears actually pick at number 53. Uh, they could also potentially trade up, so I'm not really going to defend it too much. Yeah, do I think he's going to be there? I don't know, but it is the NFL draft. You do never know. And there's still some good value here. Uh, with our next second round pick. Now, this one in real life is at number 61. And here it is a little bit higher than that. But also, I mean, Madden still doesn't have compensatory picks uh, worked in. So not that you'd be here after, you know, one round. But I'm saying it, it all kind of cancels out uh, in the end. And what do we want to do with this pick? Adetamiwa Adabare is sitting there. And I think this is the perfect value to go and get him. He could be off the board in real life, but we keep him fairly local. Northwestern guy and an athletic freak at 6'2", 280, uh, 282, I think he weighed in at the combine. But yeah, pretty awesome addition to our defensive line. Only normal development, unfortunately. They limit you with how many stars and superstars and superstar X-Factors you can have in the draft class. And Adabare, unfortunately, only has normal dev, but I do think he's going to end up being a great player and hopefully we can develop him. Oh, there goes Keanu Benton. Could have been a decent option for us. We could go receiver. Sam Laporta is here. That would be an awesome pickup for us. And, and you know what? Oh, Julius Brents too. We could go tight end. Again, Tunyon's only on a one-year deal. Luke Schoonmaker, also very good. It's a great tight end class. But in Madden, doesn't really make sense to do so. In real life, absolutely. But in the game, we can just have one tight end really it's going to be Cole Komet for the future so we can totally look to go a different direction and with these corners on the board that's exactly what I'm going to do bring in some more size into the secondary Kyler Gordon's already a huge corner uh, and Julius Brents pretty much dwarfs him at 6'4 200 pounds welcome to the Bears Julius Brents hopefully will help us solidify our cornerback group as we move on to day three. That's always fun. The draft class took away Houston from Tank Dell. Always love that. Would not be a bad option. Do we go receiver with this pick? I think we could. Do I want Tank Dell? Yeah, why not? Get a little slot receiver in there. Bring Tank Dell to Chicago. Undersized, to say the least, but I think could be a very productive slot receiver. Round five, still some great receiver options on the board. That's one of the things about the draft that's, I, I, you know, it could be true in real life because it's, you know, not exactly the best receiver year that we've seen, but it is fairly deep in terms of the talent. I would say like Michael Wilson, for example, without injuries is a pretty clear like third round pick a lot of years, but this year could be available easily on day three because of the injuries and the depth in the class. And it's tough when I say deep, you know, there's usually that association of, oh, well, that means it's really, really good top to bottom. Well, it's not especially true. It just means for me that the difference between, you know, the second or third or even first receiver in the class is not so different to the number 10 or 15 receiver in the class compared to what it would usually be. I do recognize there's the gap or there's a, a gap between one and 15, but not as much as you would usually see. Um... So I, there is value here. Jaden Reed is a burner. Rakeem Jarrett, I do like quite a bit. Michael Wilson had a, a fantastic senior bowl week. We don't necessarily need... I mean, even Marvin Mims could be a fantastic slot option. Um, we don't really need that, though. Jonathan Mingo, it is... I, I like these receivers down the board quite a bit. And I don't really see the value on a lot of other players considering what we actually need. Maybe Robert Beal off the edge or Byron Young. Okay, it might be one of those guys. Both very good athletes. Byron Young, probably the better athlete of, the, or definitely the better athlete of the two. Let's go ahead and draft him. And might actually need to go back and edit his uh, attributes a little bit in this draft class. Speed should be a little bit higher for sure. Acceleration's not in too bad of a spot. But anytime you're an edge rusher that goes out and runs in the 4-5 range, and I think he was even a little bit faster than that, yeah, you deserve some more speed. So a pretty good draft for us, all things considered. You know, good value. We have 
Most of our picks were at at least a 70 overall or higher. Even Rakeem Jarrett in the seventh is a 71 overall, which might be a touch high, but that just kind of goes to show how I feel about this receiver class. Tank Dell in the fourth is a 71. Rakeem Jarrett in the seventh is a 71. Will they be that high when Madden 24 comes out? Probably not. Uh, they'll weight it differently, but I don't care. You know, th this is kind of how I view the receivers. It is what it is. Uh, but Paris Johnson Jr., plug and play starter at right tackle at a 75 overall. Jameer Gibbs going to play a lot at a 78. Might even end up starting him. Very, very good player. Uh, and I've tweaked his attributes a little bit. He was too highly weighted towards receiving back and did not have the attributes at elusive back like he should have. Um, it's always, uh, you know, kind of a tough combo to to figure out where guys should be accurately rated. Um, but I, I think he's in a decent spot. Adabare is a 73. I don't think that's too bad. Potentially will play defensive tackle for us. I'll have to consider those uh, those possibilities. Not going to trade Cole Komet. He will end up being the starting tight end. I'm not sure if we're going to bring back Robert Tunyon. But the team certainly has improved. I think that goes without, uh, without question. We just need to figure out, yeah, where exactly is everybody going to play? I think it probably goes something like this. Or maybe Herbert, Gibbs, Foreman. The smart move is starting Jameer Gibbs. The, like, real move is starting Khalil Herbert and then having Jameer Gibbs be my third down back, which I think is what I'm going to opt to do. Uh, Cody Whitehair, by the way, got upgraded to Superstar Dev in the sim. And you know what? Hey, you want Offensive Lineman of the Year. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it, man. I'm just going to leave it. It is what it is, right? Oh, no. Happy accident. And this is how the defense is going to look. Jack Sanborn starts at outside linebacker along with TJ Edwards. Uh, the corners, I don't know. We got some work to do. Julius Brents is the same overall as Kendall Vildor. Uh, Michael Ojemudia is a little bit better and has star dev, so I'm going to opt to start with him. And then the defensive line still needs to get better. I think Atabare will end up playing defensive tackle and will get a better edge rusher in the draft. Not necessarily, though. So for now, he stays at defensive end. I move Travis Gibson over to where he is a scheme fit, and the specialist will look like this. And we can finally get started with the simulation 2023. I'll see you at the midseason mark. Okay, two and four at the midseason mark. Not so good. Our offense is struggling mightily. The defense isn't quite as bad, but it's still not good. So things are going to have to change if we're going to be successful in 2024. I don't want to write this season off just yet because it is only week eight, right? So. There is still time to do better. We're just going to have to start making some moves quickly. It is the trade deadline, and we do have some big free agents. Jalen Johnson, Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, Chase Claypool. I've also needed to go in and change all these new contracts to represent what they're actually getting paid. So I've, I've done that for Tremaine Edmonds, TJ Edwards, now Nate Davis, everybody. Very interesting cornerback prospect here. Only D press, but A zone coverage, B man. Not a fantastic athlete. A hit power. Am I looking at a safety here? Maybe. Now, Corey Massey is a heck of a name. I believe it's the combination of Kyle Massey and his well-known character, Corey in the house from That's So Raven. Yeah, we got to draft him now. Okay, I am intrigued by Peter Smith here from USC. He's got A everything at only 50% scouted, no less, and is a pretty good athlete. Ooh, the only trouble with him is the round one to two projection. Not going to be able to get him for a steal, but Peter Smith, I mean, how do I not draft that? How do I not? Jalen Johnson is back. That is our first big domino. Uh, Darnell Mooney is another one. Justin Fields has the franchise QB tag, which should mean that bringing back Darnell Mooney is not going to be difficult. It's not an especially expensive contract. Mooney is back. Now, Cole Komet... Cole Komet is slightly more expensive than I want, but if we can solidify the position for, you know, four or five years, I'm going to opt to do so. It gets a little bit expensive, but he's only 24 years old. He's already an 80 overall. It's a really good option at tight end. And then Chase Claypool, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really have a large interest in bringing back. I would do about a one-year deal overpay and... Uh, Give me at least another year to figure Chase Claypool out. So he returns $6 million a year for one year. And then Travis Gibson, I think, is actually going to be a decent option as well. 
26 years old. He's only a 76 overall, but does have star dev. I think on a three-year deal, it again gives us a little bit more time to figure it out. Still need to improve on the edge, but he is a good at least band-aid for right now if he doesn't develop, which I think he could. Tunyon, I'll give another one-year deal to. Michael Ojemudia, I would do a one-year deal, raise the money again, give me a little bit more time to figure it out. He doesn't want to be here exactly, which is okay with me for right now. And unfortunately, we only go 6-11 and 11 here. The offense was the worst in the league at scoring points, which is not where you want to be. I don't know. You guys don't need me to tell you that. That's You want to be better than 32nd in the league. Justin Fields, I think, is a big part of that. He does have the franchise QB tag along with day one starter, but it's going to take upgrading more than Scrambler to improve our team. It's got to be field general, strong arm, maybe improviser, but the CPU is just going to keep upgrading Scrambler. It's unfortunate. Khalil Herbert was very not good. 3.2 yards per carry might be one of the lowest totals, if not the lowest total I've ever seen in one of these rebuilds. Very, very bad. Very bad. Offensive line needs to improve, and him, probably. DJ Moore was good enough, but we didn't really throw for any yards. Our offense was terrible. We just got to get better. I, I don't really want to look at this team anymore. It's disgusting. Nobody even had 10 sacks. Which, in real life, isn't that crazy in the game. It's concerning. A lot of interceptions, but this team sucked. We're moving on. I'm, I'm not looking at the team anymore. We're going into free agency. We're going into season two. Season recap has Josh Allen winning MVP and the Chiefs beating the Packers in the Super Bowl. Will Levis of the Falcons wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Will Anderson with the Seahawks, Defensive Rookie of the Year. And uh, we will move on. Again, I don't want to look at how terrible this team was anymore. I want to focus on the future. I think we do have pieces. We just need to continue to acquire more pieces. I mean, this team was picking at number one overall for a reason, even with the Texans. This is not a good team. Amir Gibbs does have superstar dev, though. That's certainly somebody to build around. He'll be our starting running back in year two. Khalil Herbert can be a nice change of pace back, but it's going to be the Jameer Gibbs show now. Receivers, I do like. DJ Moore lost superstar dev. Oh, you got to be kidding me, dude. I don't know when he did it, but he lost it. I guess that's the price for Cody Whitehair acquiring it. Whatever. Uh, Paris Johnson Jr., star dev. But the offense doesn't look so bad. The defense, on the other hand, again, we have pieces. The defensive line has to get a lot better. I think at a bar, I will end up moving to defensive tackle. We could definitely draft a corner. Definitely could draft a linebacker. Safety's a need. The entire defense really could use an overhaul. In terms of players ready to negotiate before the offseason here, do I really want to bring any of these players back? Not really. And we have so much money going into free agency that we can really afford to make a couple of big splashes here. And Rashawn Gary could be the first massive one. Jeffrey Simmons is also here. Quite intriguing. Uh, Rashawn Gary doesn't like our scheme fit. We could change. We could change. The defense was bad. We want to switch anyway. But I would say there are some big fish in this free agent pond. Let's go ahead and go fishing. We are going after some big fish indeed. Rashawn Gary, trying to steal him away from the Packers, who are definitely still in this. We changed to a 3-4. We're going to try that out this season. Rashawn Gary wants to play in a 3-4, so that works for our needs. Nobody's going after Ayuk, so I figured, why not us? And then Ed Oliver... Uh, is definitely in play. Tried to get Derek Brown, but it would be so expensive compared to Ed Oliver, who is extremely comparable and also wants to be here in comparison to Derek Brown, who really does not. So kind of an easy decision to go after Ed Oliver instead. And then Jeff Okuda, not really that expensive. Superstar dev, young corner. Again, a lot of these players just kind of align with our current interests. So we decided to go after him. Are we going to get all of them? Unlikely. Ayuk is pretty much out of the question at this point. But we do get Rashawn Gary and Jeff Okuda. Unfortunately, could not bring in, obviously, Derek Brown. He goes to Minnesota. Ed Oliver to the Steelers is kind of the uh, big one that we're losing out on. But the team still improved a ton. Jeffrey Simmons off the market as well. 
but those are two big additions. Have a little bit more money now. Ayuk is still in play, but I think we're probably just going to hold off. We'll offer Jake Elliott a contract. I don't want it to be this expensive, though. So we'll just tone that down a little bit and then try to bring in Jake Elliott as well as... I don't know. I mean, Ayuk's not going to sign on. I'm okay with it. Yeah, he goes elsewhere. Do these kickers. I mean, it's just not how a kicker would be in real life. These guys don't get big money. It's like... If you were a kicker not named Justin Tucker, you were kind of lucky to be on a team. Not all of them, obviously, but that applies to a lot of kickers and punters in the league. If you can get a contract, you take it. And Jake Elliott still mulling over his offers. Make a decision. You got one offer. Sign. Okay, we got Jake Elliott. And there's really not much else that we can do here. I don't really see the value of bringing pretty much anybody in. And uh, here in the draft... Got some private workouts to at least figure out. I know a pretty good deal about a lot of the top targets. Checked into the power rushers, or excuse me, the, I'll just call them the edge rushers a bit. Like Glenn Stockton, for example, got up to 80%. Pursuits either an A or a B. That's good. The skills, I wish we knew power moves, but I don't think I'm going to scout him further. Uh, it could be an option for us, but I, I think a lot of these guys are just going to be a little bit too high up the board for us. Although we do have a couple of top picks. I don't know where the Panthers are, but we could certainly move up and get one of these edge rushers if we see them as being, you know, a can't-miss type prospect. But Keith Conrad here in maybe the back end of the first round. Man-to-man -man corner. B-man, B-press, C-zone. That's good. That's good enough. Physically, got elite speed. Ran in the low 4-3s. Elite change of direction and elite jumping. He's going to be great. If I'm targeting a corner, it's going to be that guy. So we do pick at number six in the draft. Pretty good. We also need to get the Panthers 2025 first, or excuse me, second rounder, because we don't have that, but we should have it. Panthers actually did really well, by the way, number 29. Uh, you just can't trade out that far in advance. So we should, I believe, be getting their number, uh, or their second round next year. I don't know how I missed Donnell Reed. This guy should have been on my radar. We don't really know the finesse moves here. Could be great, could be not so great. Physically, very good, I would say. Is 23, but I really wish we knew more about Donnell Reed. We pick at number six. Glenn Stockton, I'm out on, but Trey Thorpe could be could be very much in play. I mean, even Dante McFadden looks great. 6'3", 270. 21 years old with B block shed, A power moves. Athletically, very, very good. Okay, 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 okay. I've keyed in on who I want. It's Dante McFadden. He's down the board a little bit, so we are going to trade down. Not too far, though. Ooh, I mean, we're at six. That's already kind of cutting it close. Rashad Irving is still on the board, by the way. So is Trey Thorpe, who I like. I just think for the value that Dante McFadden is going to be a little bit better for us. I really actually don't think we should move down too much if we want to get him. Like, maybe if the Titans or the Texans, or the Dolphins want to do something, we can we can move down. And the Dolphins do, actually. So that's probably going to be the one for me here. Although, Titans are offering a third this year. Miami's offering a three next year. I think we're going to move down with Tennessee. We're moving down to number nine, picking up number th uh, 73 and a seven. That's like the perfect trade for me. And hopefully uh, the player I want is still on the board. It would be devastating to see him be get taken ahead of us. I don't think it's going to happen. As, the, as There goes Trey Thorpe, which I was comfortable doing. I think Trey Thorpe's going to be good. I think for the value that Dante McFadden's going to be better. Fits into our system perfectly now that we're in a 3-4 as well. We know we can be great against the run. He's also a phenomenal athlete. I mean, 454 to 46140 time. That's quite the range, I would say, but great speed, great acceleration, a tackle, a power moves. He's going to be good. Normal dev is devastating. And every time with this face in the top left, they give us this like Polynesian instead of, you know, whatever. It would be nice for the immersion factor if they could fix that. Now, Dante McFadden, again, looks very good. The normal dev is just going to kill everything. Like, I'm I'm so annoyed whenever I see normal dev, especially with a good player. He might be one of the better players in the entire draft class. Normal dev. I don't get it. And then I want Diego Gonzalez, who probably is not going to be there. 
Uh, I don't well, I don't necessarily. Peter Smith is really at the top of my board. And then there's a corner who I told you guys about, Keith Conrad, that looks great as well. So if I can get in position for those two, I'm going to be happy. But that's going to be easier said than done because we don't pick until 29. And then 38, I think we'd have to move up again. So it's going to be, you know, probably that third round pick that we picked up to help us move to like 18 or something like that. It's going to be number 29, number 73, and number 102. Move up to number 17. Giving up quite a bit. I think it's going to be worth it when we take a talented player. Hopefully the linebacker and the corner are still both on the board by this point. It would be, I'd be kind of surprised if they weren't, but I've been surprised before. Uh, Peter Smith is supposed to go in 16 picks. And then Keith Conrad supposed to go in 26. I know it seems like I may have moved up a little bit too much. I would potentially consider a trade down depending on what we would get back. So number 25 is intriguing from the Texans, also picking up number 57 in the process. I don't mind that. It honestly seems like the draft value uh, has gotten better. I feel like you used to get really, really bad offers. But to me, these are actually some good ones available. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. Like the Texans, I like. But I like this one from the Raiders even more. We move down to 24. We pick up number 56 and then a seventh round pick. So that was... A weird trade up to move down, but I think we did very, very well in the value department. And now we should be able to take the player we want uh, quite easily. Keith Conrad's there, the linebacker's off the board. Oh, how does that happen? Now, we didn't especially need him if we're going to be in a 3-4. I get that, but it's nice to take good players. And unfortunately, we can't draft him. I know now that we move to a 3-4, it's, it's less important. To have a, a third off-ball linebacker. But again, it would have been nice. Seattle's going to give me a third just to move down to 28. I'm going to trade down again. And now I'm finally going to make that selection. Not going to risk it anymore. Here we are at 28, which is like our original draft position almost. Uh, Keith Conrad is here. B-man, B-press, C-zone. I could see a starting corner right away. Elite athleticism in general. I was going to say speed, but elite everything, really. Hidden dev, love to see it. Athletic ratings are off the chart. 95 speed and change of direction, 93 acceleration and jumping, along with 90 agility. Strength is pretty good, only 21 years old. He's going to be fantastic. And now at the top of the second, we could afford to get a little bit creative here. I've been doing a lot of trading down as we have Mac Miller. Unreal. But I really haven't identified anybody as must draft. I only have a few still on my board. Now, it pretty much comes down to, do I want to draft Trevante Hill? A, catching traffic, A, catching is very nice, but he's a one-trick pony. D, route running is not good. He is a good athlete, though. Short route running could be okay, could be terrible. Medium route running could be pretty good. You know, we could use another receiver. We're going to draft Trevante Hill. Only normal development, of course. Seems to be a pretty good athlete. 90 change of direction at 6'4 is fantastic. But normal dev sucks. Raiders are offering me a second round pick next year and a fourth this year to move out of the second round. I'm very comfortable doing that. Hopefully they end up sucking next year and that second rounder looks a lot closer to a first than it does to a third. And there are still a couple of players that I like. Brian Barnett here I think is going to be the one. Really, really good athlete. We could use a defensive tackle. Does have hidden dev. He's not quite as athletic as I would like, but the hidden dev is kind of nice. Okay, I accidentally noticed my recording stopped, but good news is I'm not too far into the future. I'm only at the preseason week. I just did a quick rant complaining about the quality of the draft classes. The highest overall was a 78. The next highest was a 77. And then there were a few 76s sprinkled throughout. And I just said that, you know what? It's not fun when every draft class sucks. And that's pretty much where we were. Uh, we haven't started the next season yet. Defensive tackle is still a really, really big hole for us. Uh, I talked about that for a little while. But Barnett, as you guys saw, does have star better development. Drafted Benji Goldsberry. CPU took a pair of 68 overall safeties down the board. I really don't expect them to play very much. But yeah, the draft class overall for us was good compared to other teams just because you know we, we drafted well in a bad draft class year. The draft in general was just terrible. And... 
The odds of you seeing anything close to an 80 overall in the draft are very, very low. Seems like 9 out of 10 drafts, the highest overall player is like a 77. And I don't know what changed from the start of the year, but the draft classes suck now. Uh, occasionally, and even in this rebuild, maybe we'll see a guy in the 80s or higher. But it is very, very rare, it seems. Most of the players just are terrible. And it sucks. And I talked about Adebare, how he's likely never going to develop. If you look at him, he's a 75 overall with good ratings, in my opinion. Great athleticism. Power moves is already really high. Play rec and awareness are low. Block shedding is low. But at a 75 overall, in order to get one skill point to improve to a 76, he needs a total of 8,500 XP. And that number will rise the higher overall that he gets. So what is his ceiling, really? An 80? Normal dev is just, it's a killer. It really is a killer. They will likely never be an elite player, but if they can get to star dev, things start to change a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start the rookie Conrad in the slot, but this is basically how the team's going to set up. Defensive tackle depth is really bad. We could potentially trade for somebody, but moves need to be made. The team is getting better, but we are still a long ways away. Mid-season mark. We are hopefully going to figure it out soon. Four and three. Vikings are six and one. But this is obviously a big time improvement from where we were a year ago. In terms of potential players leaving, we got Eddie Jackson, Khalil Herbert. We have a lot of money, by the way, over 100 million. But uh, we'll go to re signing some of these players. Justin Fields is going to be probably the biggest one. And he doesn't want to be here. So, already fantastic. Can't wait for that. What does Tevin Jenkins want? Wants to be in the Super Bowl chase. Well, we're going to wait on him. I still can't extend Tunyon for anything more than a year. And he's comfortable with staying in the Illinois area, as I think that is where he's from, it said. Eddie Jackson, he's getting worse, is my big problem with Eddie Jackson. Going to try to extend him for two years. Eddie Jackson's back. But safety is going to be something we have to really look to improve. Khalil Herbert does not want to be here. I don't really care. We definitely need a second running back. He's probably not going to want to sign this, but he does anyway, okay? And even with uh, superstar dev Cody Whitehair, still not really progressing or regressing at this point, but it's bound to happen. We're going to go ahead and tag him. Uh, or No, give him a two-year contract, not tag him, although that would have been an option. Playpool, he's still like one of the best things we have. He's fairly cheap. I'm going to give him a three-year contract. Doesn't mean I'm committed, but as a third option, that's not too bad. I said I'm going to wait on Tevin Jenkins. Can't negotiate with Justin Fields just yet. Just in yet? <laughs> uh, but that is somebody that we obviously need to bring back. Otherwise, we're screwed. I mean, that's our quarterback. He's not as good as I want him to be right now, but we absolutely need him if we're going to be successful at all. Jalen Johnson becoming one of the best corners in the league right now. Let me do slot. Hopefully zone coverage gets touched in here. I'd love a speed upgrade. Plus three man. Okay. Plus two press. Not bad. Conrad only with star dev, by the way. We don't know Barnett. We don't know Kelly, who the CPU drafted. Who's not good, by the way. Just happens to have probably star dev. Barnett, probably star dev as well. Anyone who is hidden probably just has star. All right. Week nine. Can finally negotiate with Justin Fields. And suddenly he's interested. And it's because we're a playoff contender now at 5-3, and three, so we don't even have to wait on Tevin Jenkins either. We can just set a big-time extension. Let me go high risk on Justin Fields, try to get him back for cheaper, extend the years, and hopefully get him back. Yeah, it's a fairly cheap contract for a big-time quarterback, or very cheap for a big-time QB, I should say. Tevin Jenkins wants to be here. How about a five-year deal where it's cheap? Tevin Jenkins is back. Not only are we saving a ton of money, we are still improving as a team because we're getting so much talent back that could be testing the open market. All of the deals really have been team-friendly up to this point as well. I don't really think we've overpaid for anybody outside of real life with Tremaine Edmonds, potentially. It's a huge contract. Not saying he won't be worth it for Chicago, but it is a huge contract for sure. Also, I mean, think about how often I used to find the generational receivers in the draft. I cannot recall the last time I've seen one... They just disappeared. I mean, I think, I don't know if anything's changed. Maybe it was just confirmation bias, right? But I think there's a chance EA is like, oh, those are popping up too much. That's way too much fun. Let's limit that for sure. I don't know that that happened, but I'm just saying it, it seems unusual that I haven't seen 
any of those players in what feels like months. Maybe that's a stretch, but I don't remember seeing anyone even somewhat recently at all. This is D. Winters, who's actually just the name of a draft prospect in real life from TCU, who also happens to be a linebacker. Also great athlete. This one's from Notre Dame. You know, it's, it's an unusual name. All right, I don't know. Lucky, I guess. This safety has potential. 21 years old, B hit power, A to C man, A to C zone, B tackle. Physically, pretty good. There could be something there. And bringing in another Mooney is not a bad idea. Oh, what's this? I stop at week 11 so that we can get the set focus players. And we have a breakout quarterback challenge. Justin Fields coming off a stellar game. Is he in the process of taking the next step? Yes, he is. 350 scrimmage yards or four total touchdowns. And Justin Fields will become a superstar dev player. That's not going to be easy. The Seahawks really aren't so bad. But now we have a motivation to simulate one more week to week 12 against the Jaguars. So I don't think it's going to happen. It's a lot to get as the number one prospect to tight end, by the way. But um, yeah, we can hope for it. Moment of truth. Here we go. Show me a big win. Show me like 40 points. We scored six. Okay, well, I'm not even going to bother looking at it. We know the result. We scored six points. It didn't happen. But we did make the playoffs, even after a week 18 loss to the 4-13 and 13 Lions following the game. Okay. Making the playoffs, though, that is improvement. Justin Fields didn't really do too much in terms of scoring touchdowns himself. But 4,500 yards passing is quite good. Rushing, Jameer Gibbs, 3.3 .3 per carry. It's so terrible. 11 touchdowns, though. Why are running backs incapable of doing well unless they're like a 90 overall? It's mind-blowing. Another facet of the Madden Sim engine that is terrible. DJ Moore, good season. 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Darnell Mooney was a really competent number two. Jameer Gibbs was incredible as a receiver. Went to Carolina Playbook. Chase Claypool was even pretty effective as well. And then defensively, improvement for sure, although nothing spectacular. Dante McFadden, the rookie from Bama, had 17 tackles for loss, but only four sacks. Gary with 12 led the team. Eight and a half for Adetami Wadabare. Four for Dante McFadden, as we said. And three and a half for the rookie Brian Barnett. Interceptions went down a little bit, but great season for Keith Conrad as a rookie. 74 tackles, three of them for loss as well. So the rookies are performing pretty well. I'm not sure if the 3-4 is something that we're going to stay in for a while. You know, 9-8, and eight, just simply not good enough. Uh, I don't know what else I can say. Just not good enough. We are a team that needs to be on the track to 11-12 wins if we're really going to find success. And uh, we're just not quite to that level yet. It's nice to make the playoffs, but can we really hang with the 87 overall Vikings? I don't think so. I really don't. It could happen. But we know it's tough enough to win these games in simulation when we are a 10 overall favorite, let alone minus two. Our offense was 25th. Our defense was 20th. It's actually amazing we even made it into the playoffs to begin with. And I would bet the Vikings are probably going to, going to eliminate us here. And that is exactly what happens. 41-34, and we are headed to the offseason. Josh Allen wins another MVP. The Chiefs win another Super Bowl over the Falcons, though. Is quite interesting. Falcons still searching for that Super Bowl victory. Unfortunate for them, but we move on. We're not focused about any other NFC team. Not worried about the Falcons. We are worried about the Chicago Bears and actually improving. We are on the right track. Just obviously not quite there yet. Do we need to re-sign anybody? I don't think so. And uh, I don't really see a need for Jack Sanborn at this point. 25 years old, normal dev, low 70s, wasn't starting I thought that we could maybe develop him at the start, but after his year one was not particularly impressive, I knew it was probably time to move on. So he was just relegated to the bench, which I'm okay with. In real life, who knows? In Madden, it just wasn't going to work out for us this time around. And I would say the offense is pretty good. In order for us to actually improve quite a bit, Justin Fields will need to take that next step. It's not quite there. Well, throw power was a 92. Why is he regressing? What's happening? He's 26. Why is he regressing? Well, I've never seen that. He's 26. 
I mean, that is absolute bullshit. It got up to 92, yet throw power was only minus three. So are they trying to tell me that he regressed the year prior as well? He's 26 years old. Why is he possibly regressing in Madden? Dude, this game, this game is so broken. It's unbelievable. McFadden actually does get upgraded to star dev, though. Barnett has star dev. Jeff Okuda gets downgraded to star. I hate this game. I really, really do. Cody Whitehair down to star as well, if I didn't mention that. Time to make another splash, and there's not really anything splash worthy. I'd love a defensive tackle. We're going to have to trade for one if we want one. I just don't really see us doing anything in free agency. So you pick at number 19. Really unfortunate that the free agent class wasn't what I was looking for, because it would have been nice to just completely circumvent the draft and get, you know, a good defensive tackle or a good safety. Those were not options that we could unfortunately uh, use. Defensive tackle still a need. Probably will draft one. Might draft a safety. The draft class is supposed to be strong at defensive tackle. Safety, I mean, what are we really hoping for? Like a 75? I'm not moved. I've looked at a bunch of these defensive tackles. Brandon Groves would be one of the highest on the board. He had A to C block shedding that ends up being a C. Obviously not what you'd want. However, he's a really, really good athlete. And his skills overall are quite good. B power moves, B finesse moves. C block shed you can deal with. And then Andrew Burgess is 6'5", 317. Also very good. It's going to be very difficult to get both of them. So a decision is certainly going to have to be made. Brandon Groves, we can probably just stick and pick. Andrew Burgess is probably somebody we'd have to trade up for. And then Connor Floyd down the board, I like quite a bit. The combination of B block shed and A finesse moves, as well as being a very good athlete, I like that a lot. The combination of block shedding and pass rush ability, very good. And then at safety, I don't know. Like, Maurice Potts, probably the one I like the most with the B zone coverage. He's a good enough athlete. Am I really going to take that player near the first round? We have a bunch of second round picks. I think it's probably time we do something with them. And that means trading for a good player. I'm going to simulate to 19. I hope that Brandon Groves is still available. I think that's who I'm going to target at 19. I didn't really play this too safe, just simulating to the pick. And he is still available. That is the player we're going to draft. Now, let me just let me just see Maurice Johnson real quick. Also, not a bad option. Not a bad option. A power moves I quite like. I just think that Brandon Groves is a little bit more well-rounded. And I think I'm going to opt to take him for that reason. Better athlete and a little bit more well-rounded equals draft. 93 strength is incredible. 79 speed, 84 acceleration. A hit power I also like quite a bit. A play rec, B awareness. Should be good. Should be good. Did we end up making the right decision? I mean, we'll find out at the end. But I still want more help at the position. So we have multiple second round picks. We will not be spending all of them. It says we still need a quarterback. It's complete BS that Justin Fields is regressing the way he is. I'm going to see if there's anybody on the draft board first. But I'm probably going to trade that pick. And maybe even all of my second rounders in order to improve on the defensive line. I actually have Kendall Bradham on the board available. Very good athlete, A pursuit, B tackle, B zone, B awareness, A hit power. That's actually the one. Only normal dev, uh, but looked good. I'm tricked again. I tried to trade for a bunch of different defensive tackles, even multiple second round picks, but this is the one that ends up getting done. Deron Payne from the Commanders. He's an 86 overall, which is pretty good. 28 years old, which means he's obviously going to start regressing pretty soon. However, cool thing about him is he's an upgrade over who we currently have by a lot. Okay, what can we do? The offense, I still feel like he's in a good spot. Still mad about Justin Fields. I think trading for safety is going to be the next step. Deron Payne, the defensive tackle that we drafted at a bar that exists. McFadden's here. Edge is still potentially a problem, to be honest. But I don't really know what we can do about it right now. All right, we're not done trading with the Panthers, it seems. Trading their second round pick, I believe, back to them. And a projected top 10 pick next year. You're getting Brian Burns. 
Would the Panthers do that in real life? Well, who knows? Not me. And trading our last second round pick, a fourth this year and a fourth next year for projected number 31 from Seattle. And that's going to do it for this draft. So I think we've done a good job, uh, obviously, you know, taking advantage of that in the same way that it takes advantage of us. Listen, got to do what it takes. My 26-year-old star development quarterback is regressing and probably regressed even as a 25-year-old after throwing for 4,500 yards. That's what I'm dealing with. We're going to do whatever it takes to be effective and win. And we had to get a little bit creative. Brandon Groves is a 74. Kendall Bradham is a 75. A fullback that I had on my draft board, this is why the CPU drafted him, is a 75. I said, hey, it's one of the best looking fullbacks I've seen. He had A, pass block, and run block, and lead block. Uh, and also had an elite change of direction, I want to say. Elite agility for a fullback, something like that. Looks pretty good. Strength is very, very high. I needed a starting fullback at 6'2", 263. He more than fits the bill. I think this is a pretty good draft. Nothing exceptional, but pretty good. And when you look at the entire NFL, the best player was a 76. There were only three of them, including two safeties, not one that I drafted, by the way. Potts was off the board right? I think so. And then, or, yeah, Potts was off the board. Parks, was he available? Yeah, he would have been. But Bradham's a 75, so it's not so bad anyway. It's just that these two, specifically Parks, still on the board with Hidden Dev. Oh man, 88 speed, 76 man covered, 72 zone. Sign me up for that. Doesn't even look good. Like, why would I draft that player? How is he a 76? And how is 76 the highest overall in the class? Let me rant more about how unfun this makes the game. And I don't expect every draft class to be filled with generational players. I get it, right? But man, it'd be a little bit more fun if we could have somebody that could maybe end up being a Pro Bowl level player. Maybe just one. Like, I'm I'm legitimately pissed off about Justin Fields. It's, it's so dumb. Like, I want to intervene, to be honest. But uh, getting Brian Burns is huge. And I am considering... I mean, we could sit in the 3-4 still. We've got personnel that still fits for it. Payne can be our nose tackle. Rashawn Gary could move down. Rashawn Gary's huge. I talk about this in every video because I always get Rashawn Gary. He's 6'5", 280. This guy certainly profiles as someone that can play defensive end even in a 3-4. I know he's not a defensive tackle per se, but if you watched him... First of all, if you watched him in high school in New Jersey, he was a dominant defensive tackle type player. I think was the number one overall recruit of that year. If he wasn't, he was very close. Let me confirm. No, he was. 2016, number one nationally, according to 24-7, number one DT, went to Michigan, pretty much played a hybrid defensive tackle slash defensive end role. I thought he was going to end up being... A defensive tackle in the NFL. I thought 3-4 defensive end was his perfect fit. The Packers moved an outside linebacker, and he's just awesome there too. He's a freak athlete. He can do anything. But for me, he's going to play defensive end in my 3-4. And he's a scheme fit, which means we now have a hole at outside linebacker. How are we possibly going to fill that? Gee, I don't know. Maybe it's another freak athlete off the edge in Brian Burns. That sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. Okay, 2025. The team is set up. Atabare, I guess, is going to start. But nah, you know what? It might be McFadden. I don't know what's going to happen. Specialist-wise, Payne, McFadden will be my rush D tackles. Gary and Burns off the edge. I don't know what else I can do. I think we put the team in a pretty good spot. Obviously made some big-time trades to get Brian Burns and Deron Payne. I hope they are the difference. Hey, one and six at the midseason mark. A monster step back. Worst offense in the league again. What is happening? It's just a, it's just unfortunate. I don't know. I don't want to waste another season, but I'm not going to change playbooks mid-year. I think that could be a difference maker for us. But the team's good. We just aren't finding success at all. DJ Moore going to need a new contract. Same with Deron Payne, which is why it was probably pretty easy to trade for him. TJ Edwards, Jaquan Brisker. None of these guys want to be here, by the way, except for Robert Tunyon, who I don't even want. Deron Payne, we can bring back probably pretty easily, and we do. The rest of these guys, I might wait on. DJ Moore wants to win. 
fucking I can't win, apparently. TJ Edwards wants more money. He's going to be a tough one to bring back. It's going to be a huge contract that I'm just not really willing to offer. And in the event that we find ourselves one in six, which we do, it's going to make sense to make a move. I'm going to trade TJ Edwards. Washed Cowboys running back heads to the Cardinals. Seems oddly familiar. Trading TJ Edwards out of Tommy Wai out of Barre and a third round pick for Cam Curl. Seems like it'd be a bad trade, but he's an 89 overall now and only 26 years old. So we upgrade at safety and we get somebody that hopefully wants to be here as opposed to TJ Edwards that was going to leave. We would not have been able to pay him. And uh, Curl, Brisker will slide over to free safety. I think that's a better combo uh, at the back end. This, as you can imagine, also makes Eddie Jackson expendable. So it's Eddie Jackson, a second round pick this year, and a seventh for Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, Sam Ellinger, because hook him. Uh, we needed something to work for the cap. And we also got a third round pick next year. I don't think I've ever seen the loading screen. I don't know if you can see that. I didn't notice it at first. <laughs> I've never seen the loading overlay on the actual game before over what isn't being loaded. Is that just going to stick on the screen? Nope. Yeah, we traded some players and picks to get it done. But JOK and Cam Curl, I would say that's a pretty good upgrade over Eddie Jackson and TJ Edwards. At least in the game. Jaquan Brisker apparently wants to play in a warm weather state. Shouldn't have gone to Penn State for college then. He's going to end up having to be a franchise tag player. He just doesn't want to be here and I don't care about that. So we're going to bring him back. Nate Davis does actually return. I guess Jaquan Brisker is like, it's too cold. I can't play here. Come on, dude. Braxton Jones is back as well. You know, it's really, really impossible to develop offensive linemen in this game too, in my experience. That's a little bit frustrating. If we can start winning, even get like close to 50% on our historic record, I think DJ Moore would have a little bit more interest. It would be a little bit easier to sign. I'm going to wait on him. Playoff time, I bet we're not going to be taking part in the playoffs, unfortunately. But, you know... It is what it is. This is not a surprise after the midseason mark disappointment. 6-11, and 11, the number 29 offense. And explain to me the defense. Fifth in yards, 10th, or in passing yards, 10th in rushing yards per game allowed. 20th best defense. We don't allow any yard, but when we do, it's always a touchdown. Fantastic. Points per game. I mean, our offense. If ever there was a sign to move to KC playbook, it was having the... the top five worst offense in the league like every year of this thing cowboys beat the Bengals in the super bowl mashed them 49 23 lamar jackson won mvp i don't think we've seen on the far right there as matt rule wins coach of the year i don't think we've seen any bear for anything over the course of this thing Dak prescott super bowl mvp okay time to re-sign players who's the big one dj moore yeah does not want to be here jaquan brisker same deal we talked about that Onion's regressing. It's okay. Not going to be a part of this. I think DJ Moore actually regressed as well. I think he was an 89 overall. Uh, I am going to offer him a big-time contract to keep him in Chicago, and he ends up signing back. Maybe gave him a little bit too much, but I didn't want to risk the franchise tag, knowing that I would probably have to franchise tag Jaquan Brisker. Going to up the money a little bit, try to bring him back, and he is. Thankfully, don't have to franchise tag him. And then, uh, I mean, like Kyler Gordon, do we really need him? Probably not. We'll test free agency. See what's going on there. $50 million potentially, potentially spent. That's what happens when you get a really cheap quarterback contract. You actually have a ton of wiggle room to go after other players to help your team out. We're an 89 overall team. 89 overall. It's time to win more than nine games in a season for our peak. That's what has to happen. JOK up to superstar. Travis Gibson down to star, but he didn't really play a whole lot. So I guess that makes sense. Still in the market for a big time edge rusher. I mean, Gary could move back to left outside linebacker. He does play edge anyway. So what we could do is get another off ball player. That left outside linebacker spot's going to be weird. We could get another defensive lineman or just linebacker. Anything in the front seven would work. So it's kind of just the best player there, I would say. A couple of running backs we could add, and I think we're going to. Jameer Gibbs just really hasn't got it done for us. 
Damian Pierce would offer some thunder to go with the Jameer Gibbs Lightning. Uh, Pierce might end up in Kansas City. Brian Robinson could be an option as well. But Robinson and Pierce, both power backs, both want the same per year. 13 teams in on Brian Robinson, two in on Damian Pierce. Why is that? I could offer him more money. Why not? We have the money. That's not the issue. Quay Walker is also a pretty good option for us as well. He's kind of like a hybrid player anyway. So I think that's going to be a great fit for us. TJ Edwards has also made it to free agency. I can always draft a corner. Don't really need to uh, go out and pay one. And then receiver, Garrett Wilson could be big. He's going to be really expensive though. We don't really need one. Sky Moore could be a decent option. I'll offer him a contract. But the big one is really going to be Quay Walker. I saw Jordan Davis opted to go a different direction. Damian Pierce would be cool, but not necessary, I would say. The big one is going to be Quay Walker. Let me just extend that uh, a little bit. And by extend, I mean give him a little bit more money. Do something like that. Well, we got Quay Walker and Sky Moore. Who was the other player I went after? Quay Walker. Damian Pierce off to KC. Robinson to Tampa Bay. Could still use a power back, though. I'm going I'm to look to see what's there. James Robinson. Ugh. Maybe we'll draft one. All right, well... I think I, I've complained enough. I think this is a generational defensive tackle. Matt Cash from Texas. Yeah, I need to get the Ricky Williams signed jersey framed up in the back that I uh, have recently acquired. A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle. Physically, uh, pretty damn good. That's what I would say. But the A finesse moves, A power moves, A tackle, A awareness, I would say is steering me towards moving up to number one. I think he's going to be very, very, very good. Now... I have already done a video on following the career of a generational defensive tackle. You can find that it's on my channel. Do I have a playlist for all the generational guys? I don't think so. I think they're in the, the uh, rebuild playlist. You can check them out or you can just search it uh, on YouTube for whatever position you want following the career of a generational defensive tackle. I just recently only did quarterback for the first time. Ooh. Portland Baxter, not a bad-looking tight end uh, prospect. Okay, we got some some options here in the draft. We can go a number of different directions, um, or we can't, and I'm just going to trade up for the defensive tackle and then try to find a way to get the, the tight end in there as well. Although Nate Manning is intriguing. Also, it's interesting that a receiver ran 4-2-6 the combine uh, at 4-2-4 in his pro day, and those were each the third fastest times. Very interesting. There were there are a bunch of elite speed receivers in this class. It's it's insane. I've I've clicked on three. Eddie Blade also at elite speed ran in the four threes though, as opposed to uh, four twos. I want to find the guy who ran faster than four two four. Another elite speed receiver, Miguel Aquaviva, ran three to four ran in the four threes again. Not even close to the fastest. Somehow. There's the second fastest time. Joey Peterson ran 4.25. I don't know if anyone's going to run faster than uh, 4.24 or 4.26 at the combine. Another elite speed receiver. Does everyone in this class have like upper 90 speed? I can't look through all of them, but you know, somebody out there has unbelievable speed. It would be cool to sort times if that was an option. I think it used to be. Not anymore. Cardinals pick at number one. I'm not going to let them. We are going to move up all the way to number one for a defensive tackle that we don't even necessarily need. The team says we need a defensive tackle. I don't necessarily agree with that. Sometimes a player is just so good that you simply cannot pass them up. We pick at number 18. I don't know if we're going to be able to move all the way up. Actually, it's going to take a lot. And I still would like to draft that tight end. We might have to get very, very creative with what we do. Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe 18 a fifth might have to trade a player it's gonna have to be a player so number 18 is actually not high enough right now so we have to use number 18 and maybe another third next year to move up to like 10 or something to get this to work we're trading a third next year a first and a fifth this year to move up to number 11 and then number 11 hopefully i'm able to send to the cardinals trading barnett who you remember we drafted number 11 and a four for number one where we are going to cash in. 
If you remember the defensive tackle's name, that maybe you got I got air to blow out of your nose. Maybe. Maybe. Wasn't wasn't really funny, to be honest. But Matt Cash is really good. Really, really good. Block shedding we don't really know about, and I don't really care about. All I need to see is A power moves, A finesse moves, A tackle, and I'm sold. I am 100% bought in. 89 strength to go along with 76 speed. Good enough acceleration. He should be fantastic. Should be the best player in the class, I would say. You know, when you've done as many drafts as I have in Madden 23... You just can tell when somebody's going to be different. I feel like I'm usually a very good judge of who the best player in the class is going to be. And usually, or at least historically, it's been somewhat obvious. In these past couple, I mean, everyone's bad. It's kind of tough to figure out who the best one is. But how do I get back in position to draft this tight end? I'm going to need, like, number 11 that I just gave to Arizona. Trading Travis Gibson and a first next year, as well as a third for a first this year, number 11, and a fourth next year. Really doing a lot of board navigation, but I just want to show you guys, I'm going all in. Doing whatever it takes to be as successful as possible, even if that means that Cole Komet's not the guy and we have to start a rookie tight end. I'm down to do that. I think that... um. You know, there's a chance this guy is a tremendous, tremendous prospect. A catching, elite speed, great overall athleticism, can block. He, he checks a lot of boxes. We're going to draft him. Cortland Baxter, 89 speed, 89 acceleration, star or better development for the 6'3", 258-pound tight end out of Michigan. It's a big dude. And he's got nothing on the real-life Luke Schoonmaker out of Michigan who is a massive tight end. But that is our draft. Off-season recap. I'm expecting at least a 79 overall. It's got to be at least a 79 overall for Matt Cash. And it is a 79 overall. Baxter's a 74, who I might start. But Cash at 79, I would say is pretty good. Ron Stopper, 78. He's got 89 strength. He's actually playing up to an 80. Block sheds up to a 79. Tackle up to an 88. Power moves, 82. Finesse moves, 77. Everything else is high 70s or into the 80s. Hit power is high. Pursuit's already in 85. He's got swim move, bull rush, high motor. He better be a beast. And he was the best overall player of the class by a lot. Nate Manning was the next highest at 76. Another safety. Another tight end, actually, that went after the one we drafted. Spencer Posey from South Carolina. A year older than the tight end we drafted. Interesting. Is he better though? 88 speed, 91 acceleration at 6'6", 237. Obviously a tremendously good athlete. His dev trade is show me star. Thank you. Anytime you, you miss on a player like that, especially at the same position, uh, you don't want to see superstar dev. You can feel a little bit better about it if it's only star. Portland Baxter, 89 speed, 89 acceleration. I guess the other tight end has a little bit higher catch in traffic and maybe awareness. But route running on this tight end, it doesn't look good, but that's great for a tight end. Aggressive possession and run after catch. I feel like we did pretty good here. The defense looks fantastic. I'm moving to a 4-3 so we can actually win games. Gary and Burns off the edge is going to be a lethal combination for opposing offenses. And then Payne and Cash up the middle. I mean, the names fit, so... They got to be a good combo. That's what I'm basing that off of. Linebacker's good. Secondary, obviously very good. Cam Curl, Jaquan Brisker, Jalen Johnson, Jeff Okuda, and then Conrad here in the slot. It's a great defense with depth. McFadden, Groves. This is a fantastic defense. The offense has to play better. Is there anything I can do on offense to improve this team? I like wide receiver. But I think that's probably the one big hole outside of Justin Fields who just refuses to develop. I would say we probably don't have a lot of money to bring in a superstar wide receiver. Don't really have the picks either. We're locked in for 2026. This is the dream team. We got 30 mil, but I don't know that we have the draft capital. I moved up to get that tight end. I still feel good about it, but I'll tell you, we need results now. We need results. Three and four at the midseason mark. Our offense, 27th in the league. Our defense has taken a big step up, moving to a 4-3. The offense continues to be just terrible, top to bottom. 
It's depressing, to be honest. And we made the playoffs, finally. Oh, and everyone in our division wasn't even close. We were never in danger. We could have won seven games and made the playoffs. I don't think I've ever seen a division be quite so terribly, but let me tell you, my heart needed it. I couldn't stand another uh, terrible season. And we just had a great second half. Only two losses. Let's see here. Lions. I mean, they started out 0-4. Quite a few losses in there. Ended up with four losses to close out the season. Packers were kind of up and down, but oh my goodness, look at this stretch. Week six, including a bye week, to week 15, they lost every game. <laughs> we needed it, man. Vikings had some ugly stretches in there. Was that week 12 to week 18? They only won one game. We needed it. We needed this so badly. And we're not like some random middle of the pack team. We are one of the highest overall teams, if not the highest overall team in the NFL. And we are struggling to make the playoffs. It, it, I'm so grateful that we're finally there. We finally made it. It's 2026. I know you can't expect to rebuild a team overnight, but that's kind of what I do around here. By whatever means necessary sometimes. And we just were not able to get it done and uh, finally did. Rams in the wild card. I usually don't jump in this early, but God, no playoffs in 2022, obviously, but 2023, I think we made it in 2024 with nine wins, right? And then didn't in 2025, or maybe I, I, I mixed up the years. Maybe we made it in 2023 and then not in 2024, not in 25, something like that. Either way. One playoff berth, the entire rebuild up to this point, not ideal. This is, of course, our second. And we are up 7-0 as we close out the first quarter. Rams with their first score. It's a field goal. We get one back to extend the lead back to a touchdown. Rams still fighting, but just can't seem to find the end zone. Bears back up 13-3. Offense, wake up. The Rams are only going to stay asleep for so long. That's the first touchdown. Under two minutes to play. We are on offense. Second and five. No timeouts left for LA. That means a first down ends the game. Need Jameer Gibbs to push it over for six yards. That's all we need. It's a decent start, but there's a flag. If this is a hold, I'm... Oh, my God, dude. I can't catch a break with this game. It's going to be second and 13. Not only do we go back, the clock stops. Now, that's not so bad because the clock was stopped anyway but it makes it a lot tougher to potentially convert. But the speed of Jameer Gibbs brings us back to about the same spot. However, instead of second and five now, it's third and six. We are going to run the ball. We didn't get the block. 64 doesn't really seem to want to do anything. And I'll tell you, I know a field goal, if we were to make it, would put us up by a touchdown. But it's fourth and five. We can bleed out a lot of the clock here. A first down very obviously ends the game. So we are going for the win here. But also, if we don't get it, as long as we waste enough time, they'll have, they'll need a, a field goal, or they'll need a touchdown to be in it. A field goal will not do. And we'll step up with fields, and that is the ball game. They would have needed a touchdown. A field goal wasn't going to do it, so they would have 20 seconds to go all the way down the field and get a touchdown. On our defense, they scored nine points the entire game. It probably wasn't happening. But field scrambles up the middle, takes off for the, t uh, for the first down. And we move on to the division. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa with an upgrade. And we also have an upgrade for another Jeremiah on our team. Jeremiah Kelly. And it's the Atlanta Falcons in the divisional. Not really who I expected to see here. But when you uh, consider that they've already been to the Super Bowl, I guess it's not entirely surprising. Oh, and we actually didn't even check out the stats for this season. Let me go ahead and check that. Justin Fields, 4,500 yards, 37 touchdowns to 14 picks. It's a great year, so he's going to regress. Jameer Gibbs is up to a 90, which means he's actually able to go over four yards per carry. 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns. Great year. Receiving Darnell Mooney was great. So was DJ Moore with 12 touchdowns that led the team. Cole Komet was phenomenal. Chase Claypool was a fine receiver three. Defensively, JLK led the team in tackles. We had actually three with 100 tackles or more. And the pass rush was clearly very, very good. 21 and a half sacks for Brian Burns. 14 for Gary. 13 and a half for the rookie Matt Cash. Hook him. 10 and a half for Deron Payne. Cash, 
Only star dev. Very not generational, but also very good. So I'm okay with it. But uh, that that really is something. He might go up to superstar if he won defensive rookie of the year. I mean, a defensive tackle getting 13 and a half sacks is wild. JOK was six, four for Tremaine Edmonds. He also had four interceptions, six for Jalen Johnson. I mean, we might have put together the most sacks ever by a defense. Definitely possible. 74. The most sacks in a season. The Chicago Bears in 1984 had 72. And here we are in 2026. And we've put up 74. That is more than 20 more than the number two team in the league for sacks. Yeah, our pass rush was something special. As I loaded into the game, I noticed that the Falcons had Will Levis. Kind of forgot they did that, but that is, uh, that is something, right? He's got superstar X-Factor now. He's been lighting the league on fire. And I'm worried about this Atlanta team. They scored a touchdown on their first possession just as we did. But it seems like it's going to be a touchdown fest here. It's 21-14, 21-21 here in Atlanta. Maybe this game should be played in London. Falcons up 28-21. We get a field goal to put us back in reach. And the Falcons are going to go for it on fourth and two, trying to end the game. Going out of eye form. Levis under center. Algier is the tailback. It's a fullback dive, and they're going to get it. Oh, I did not expect that at all. It's a two-minute warning, and that could be our season. Listen, they, they got me. I fell for it big time. The fullback dive was the last thing on my radar. We are not out of it yet. We need a touchdown. That's the big thing. We need a touchdown. I think we're going to be able to get the stop with the TD with no timeouts. That is going to be where the real challenge presents itself. And we over-pursued. We over-pursued. Oh, my Lord. We got to let him in. We got to let him in. It's our only chance. It's not a good chance, but it's our only chance. Darnell Mooney has three touchdowns today. We're going to need a quick one. It's going to take a miracle, pretty much. With a timeout, though, I still feel like it's feasible. Throw outside for Mooney. Ball's there. Broken tackle. Darnell Mooney looking for number four. Outrunning who I believe is Tyreek Stevenson and getting to the end zone for the quick touchdown. We needed that so badly. Now, we also are going to need an onside kick. This is essentially useless because... It doesn't matter if we convert the uh, two-point conversion. If we don't get the extra point, which means if we don't get the uh, onside kick, it doesn't matter anyway. Here we go. Onside kick to determine our season, and we didn't place it right. That's the game. We gave it a good run, man. It's just the defense, for me, was not good when it needed to be. We had a fourth and two. We couldn't stop it because, I, I mean, I didn't expect fullback dive. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, and then... They ran an outside zone, and I tried to get to the outside because all our players were blocked, and Algier just cut it back, and it was a first down. We're going to do one more season. I'm obviously disappointed in 2026 and that we even have to go to 2027, but I think the team's going to be good enough. I think we found our rhythm. I think we're going to be successful in 2027. We're only going to get better, hopefully. Going to have to bring back some players, maybe, but we're in a good spot. Upset we couldn't get it done here, but... It's a divisional loss. Like, those happen. I usually super sim through those anyway. Giants beat the Steelers in the Super Bowl. 44-38. Dak wins MVP with the Cowboys. Justin Herbert wins Super Bowl MVP with the Giants. And look at that. Matt Cash. I don't know if you can see it. Defensive Rookie of the Year with the Bears. Finally, somebody gets it done. Oh, no. We have $76 million in available salary cap, which means we are going to have a lot of players that need to be re-signed, which I am not excited about. Matt Cash, up to Superstar Dev, fantastic. Run stop, we're going to take his overall up a little bit higher, hopefully. Block shedding by two, play wreck by one. Brian Burns, Tremaine Edmonds, Jameer Gibbs, Paris Johnson. Not too bad. We do have money, though, so I think we're going to be able to get it done. Brian Burns takes us down to 45 mil. Tremaine Edmonds is still going to be expensive. He should sign that, though. He's back. Jameer Gibbs, not interested in re-signing I'm looking at your re-sign interest. What are you, stupid? Uh, we'll come back to that. Paris Johnson, only an 83 overall. Going to have to overpay to keep him. Oh, but that's pretty much it, though. Okay. Julius Brents, one-year deal's fine. And we'll franchise tag Jameer Gibbs. Squad stays together. We're going to make one final run at it. For anyone we're able to get, 
Bijan Robinson. More Texas. He only he wants nothing per year. Please, please join the Bears. Um, the Lions want him. Hmm, can't can't really do that. I mean, we we can't. We can't offer really more than this, so it's either he wants to become a bear or he's going or he's going to Detroit. I mean, let's let's be honest, guys. When given the choice to live in Chicago or Detroit, I obviously would decline. But you'd choose Chicago over Detroit, surely. <laughs> we didn't get Bijan. He's headed to the Lions. All right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure Detroit's awesome. All right, we don't pick until the end of the second round, which means I'm sure there's going to be somebody worth trading up for. <laughs> That's usually how that works. Oh, it's, it's a generational quarterback with A, everything. That's fast. He's only got a good arm. Yeah. Of course, well, we don't, we have Justin Fields. What do we need a player like that for? I don't love the talent at this spot. We're going to take depth. Give me LaMichael Edmonds. Looks okay for normal dev. CPU can handle the rest. He's a 76. That's pretty good for not doing any scouting at all. There is a 78. Oh, okay, there's a generational player. Uh, Trevante Armstrong, 88. What the fuck? 88, I think, might be the highest overall I've seen this year. I think it I, it can go up to 89, I've heard. Um, Yeah, dude, he's 6'1", 220 with 96 speed and acceleration, 88 stiff arm, 99 juke, 92 agility. He's got aggressive and possession catch trait. I don't know what to tell you, dude. He's already... He's a 24th ranked running back in the league. Actually, it's not quite as high as I would think. Um, there are really 23 running backs that are at 88 overall or higher. Uh, yeah, he's a freak. He's the best prospect I've ever seen in the draft. I, however, have already done following the career of a generational running back, who I believe was an 86 in the draft. Where's that quarterback? What happened to that clown? There he is. Went number eight as hidden dev. Is really good. I mean, that's a 76. How is that possible? He looks unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore, dude. Got star dev. I'd take it still. Hey, I acquired Trevante Armstrong. I will give you Jameer Gibbs. They're not even interested at all. They're like, we know the kind of freak we just got. We are not going to give him up, which is understandable. Oh, Cody Whitehair retired. I don't have a center. Hulk Komet has superstar dev now, which is cool. I need a center. Cash, superstar. Ooh, Jalen Johnson up to X Factor. Okay, yeah, the team still looks insane. We just don't have a center. The Giants got John Michael Schmitz. I can see it happening. If you're watching this video, you know who you are. Oh, we just traded Chase Claypool for Eric McCoy. Get annihilated. All right, actually, pretty big get for our offensive line. I don't know what else to say about this team. We found a center. We got playmakers all over the place. We could use a power back. I will say that. How about Khalil Herbert? And he doesn't really fit the bill exactly, but that's okay. Give me James Robinson. All right. Now we have depth at running back, too. We have basically no money, but who needs money? We have a really bad punter, though. We get a good punter. Let's trade him. Fifth round pick gets me Blake Gillikin. It's probably too much to trade for a punter, but I don't care, dude. I wasn't trying to try to trade for a punter multiple times. D. McFadden. Is that a player we have? I don't even... <laughs> We, we drafted Darren McFadden. I don't even remember that. Five and two at the midseason mark. We have a 95 overall defense. Again, this team is phenomenal. Hey, Justin Fields with an upgrade point. Let's get him improviser. How about that? JOK is going to be playing up to a 91 overall. Plus two block sheds. Nice. Uh, Dove Cameron will just upgrade with the CPU. Playoff time. We are 10 and whatever that equates to. No, we went 14 and three. Number 11 offense per game, but the number one defense again. Big win over the Chiefs, too, in Week 18. Double digits. Will Levis had quite the year. 
But Justin Fields still just trucking along. Limited the turnovers, though. 70% completion percentage. I like that. Rushing, Jameer Gibbs was great. Four and a half yards per carry, 14 touchdowns. Khalil Herbert, eight TDs as the backup. Gibbs just five yards shy of 1,400 receiving. Darnell Mooney was great. DJ Moore was pretty good. Cole Komet had a fantastic season. Jameer Gibbs did his thing. Sky Moore in not the slot. I think he was just our third receiver. Uh, JOK with 127 tackles, four for loss, three and a half sacks, four picks. Could be defensive player of the year. Hermaine Edmonds, plenty of tackles. Sacks, 23 and a half for Burns, 16 and a half for Gary. Cash had nine and a half, four and a half for Walker. Like we stepped back in terms of getting to the quarterback, but our defense was still unbelievable. So, you know, who cares? Ron Payne, 17 TFLs, uh, forced plenty of turnovers. We were fantastic. We got the first round by for a reason. And uh, show me, show me the Cowboys. Let's knock them off. Ooh, it's the Giants. Nine and eight, 91 overall team for the Giants. Okay, not so bad, Big Blue. Avon Thibodeau up to X Factor. Same thing with Sexy Dexy, Saquon Barkley. We have the overall advantage by one. So, I mean, you can call it a wash. And it's a snow game at night. I mean, obviously at night it's a playoff game. We have yet to find the scoreboard. Giants up 7-0. It's been a low-scoring game, to be honest. But that would be a big score before the end of the half. But an instant score. 95-yard touchdown by Jameer Gibbs. We have the lead now. 21-14. We are running away with it. And we win it. Kind of a roller coaster there. Didn't seem like we were even in it until suddenly, boom. Look at the score summary. We jump out to the lead in the third quarter. Pretty incredible. Commanders in the... NFC Championship here. And we've actually stolen from them. So they don't have Deron Payne. They don't have Cam Curl. I thought about going after either Montez Sweat or Chase Young. Didn't end up pulling the trigger. Obviously, we got Brian Burns. But this is still a good team. Looked at Jonathan Allen. I think tried to trade for him. But it just wasn't enough. So we went with Chase. Or excuse me. We went with uh, Deron Payne instead. But now we face them in the championship. The NFC. Commanders, Bears, and it's going to be an interesting one. We are quickly on top, 7-3 to three now. 14-3 after another touchdown and a field goal makes it 17-10. Washington back in the end zone. We need to just keep the foot on the gas pedal. Doing fine right now, but need to limit points for Washington clearly. They're still very much in this game, and it is now a three-point game. We're on defense. I think they have Devon A-Chain in the backfield and Walter at quarterback. They're performing uh, pretty well right now. And under pressure is their quarterback, sacked by the former commander, Deron Payne. Big time play. That's a two-minute warning. Two minutes between us and a Super Bowl berth. Got to continue to play good defense. Allowing 24 points is more than we did on the entire season, but it's the playoffs. Things change. And we got to stop this team. They have three timeouts. I don't really think time will be much of a factor. Big hit there from JOK. But it'll be third and short. And that is the two-minute warning at one minute and 54 seconds. I think that's a bug. I think they called a timeout, right? <laughs> I think they called a timeout. We're going to pass commit. Our defensive line should absolutely tear them apart. Quick throw to the flat, though. A-chain moves the chains. Moves the A-chains. It's too perfect. We might just pass commit every play at this point. We know they're going to be passing the ball. Even if it's a screen, A-Chain still on his feet, still going, finally brought down. It's not Khalil Mack, 152. I think it's Rashawn Gary. Again, time not a factor. Check down. Three, he's going to run. Oh, uh, we couldn't get him. Big hit and no fumble. Walter took a shot. Basically, no time goes off the clock, though. He's just going to check down again. He's going to look to scramble. Jeremiah Usu koromoa with the tackle. That's big. Time continues to tick. Nope, timeout. It didn't really pop up on the screen until late, but all right. Third and three. Quick throw. Rally and tackle. There's a juke from A-Chain, but the tackle is made. It'll be fourth and one. 40 seconds to play. This is a great spot for a timeout. Washington opts not to take one. They're going to take a field goal. This is a deep field goal. This is a deep field goal. I mean, kick it if you want to. You are iced. We're not going to block it. 
I just don't think you got it in you. Personally, this is too deep. To stay in it. <laughs> Short by about eight yards. <laughs> I wasn't even close. And think about it, it had to go up too. He was only about maybe four yards away, but it still had to be 10 feet higher. We'll take one final kneel and head back to the Super Bowl. Why are you calling a timeout? What possibly do you think could happen? Are we gonna fumble the snap on the kneel? Give me a break. We're going to the Super Bowl. JOK is gonna jump into the 90s here, and I believe because his superstar development, he'll now have the access to a new thing. Is it Lurker? I don't know how much that factors in CPU game. Maybe it does. Oh, that's right. You can't do it after the game or else it freezes. Sweet. And it's going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers in the Super Bowl. Bear Steelers. Sky Moore going to jump up to an 85 overall as well. Very nice. Oh, he's actually face scanned into the game. Kind of a surprise, I would say. Whole Komet up to Superstar X Factor. That'll be interesting. And then defensively, wow, JOK up to Superstar X Factor as well. Although that's not going to factor. We'll leave it on Jalen Johnson. The defense looks incredible. The offense is all right. Got a four overall point advantage on Pittsburgh. Let's see if we can take him out. And we are up first as we close out the first quarter. Now 14-0. Defense is showing up and so is the offense pouring it on. But we've seen bigger comebacks than this in franchise. Need to keep it up. And that's a good way to do it. 20 to nothing. Steelers trying to fight back. Under two minutes to play. And I fear that it is over for Pittsburgh. Let's get Cole Komet a touchdown. Actually don't like it. We're going to scramble with Fields. Man, is he fast. <laughs> like, I know that. But also, he feels faster than the 99 overall quarterback I had recently in that video. Working off play action. Ooh, we rolled out right, and we threw it away. Why did I throw that away? I want the clock to continue to tick. <laughs> That's great situational football. I didn't even realize what the situation was, to be honest. DJ Moore, quick win. That, uh, you didn't know? That's not a human reaction. Come on, man. DJ Moore, instant win. That's got to be a touchdown. Pass led up. I just didn't do the left trigger passing. How, how does he get up for this? Unreal. We got a field goal, though. It really shouldn't matter too much. And uh, we'll see if Alford here for the Steelers can make some type of miracle comeback. We've put him in a spot to potentially do it. But it's unlikely. Oh, that's going to be a big play. Cam Curl is slow. That'll take time off the clock, though. So there, there is a benefit to allowing a nice big play like that. Big tackle? Nope. There we go. That's pretty much the game. If, if it wasn't already over, which it is. I'm all over that. Give me a break. And that is the ball game. Under Justin Fields, the Chicago Bears have finally won it all again. For the first time in many years. I'm not going to do the math. I'm not a math guy. you got to know our limits. But for the first time since 1985, the Chicago Bears are Super Bowl champions. And at this point, I've already done the math in my head, but I'm going to keep that a secret between you and me. Or between uh, me and me. Big time Super Bowl win. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.